Chen is a crafty and smart lawyer in the courtroom, but his work ethic is very different from the traditional image of a lawyer. He does whatever it takes to pursue money and power and is known as a black lawyer. In a lawsuit to win for his wealthy female clients, he and his assistant, brother Vit, even replaced the witness's eyeglasses at one point. This makes it impossible for the witnesses to see it in court, thus nullifying the relevant evidence. Chen is graceful, handsome in appearance and fluent in Chinese. The clients he serves are wealthy and powerful members of society. Instead, his goal is to acquire more wealth and power. However, behind the facade of this glamorous lawyer, is Chen really as dark as he appears? The twist in the story occurs when Chen wins a lawsuit and he is retaliated against by his opponents. At the moment of crisis, a mysterious man steps in and saves his life. Chen looked at the handsome man with gratitude, so he offered to buy him dinner to show his gratitude for saving his life. However, the man leaves in a hurry because of an urgent phone call, leaving Chen curious and grateful. Meanwhile, Tin is a Taekwondo instructor with exceptional skills and appearance. He rushed home after receiving an emergency phone call, thinking his grandmother had fainted. It was actually a prank played by his family for his birthday. Tin was angry but patient and caring with his little niece. His family consists of his grandmother, his little niece, and a neighbor friend, Sister Nan, and her husband. The family atmosphere is very counsy and harmonious. The little niece understands and appreciates her uncle's care and wishes him to find his love soon. But she saw her uncle come home and fall asleep from fatigue. The purchases that were supposed to be his responsibility were being handled by his young niece. However, something terrible happened just down the road. The young niece was involved in a car accident on the road and unfortunately passed away. Driving the car is Tan, the congressman's son, instead of taking Tan away. The police keep stopping Tin from getting close. The news is heard by Chen, who seems to smell a business opportunity. The Tin family doesn't need compensation from the congressman. At his niece's funeral, Cockney Tan didn't even show up to apologize. It demanded that Tin know the error of his ways, publicly apologize, and be punished appropriately. Tin protests every day with a sign. He hoped that the case would get the attention of the community, so that Tin could be brought to justice. That day as he was heading back, he saw a familiar face. He saved him once again. Their destinies are as entwined as their watches and buttons from this moment on. Tin thought Chen had seen the news and found him. He was particularly pleased to learn that Chen was a lawyer. He needed exactly one legal aid, more friends, more ways. But while Chen is not wrong to be a lawyer, he is not on Tin's side. He's a lawyer on the congressman's side. His purpose was to persuade Tin to accept the 10 million baht compensation offered by the MP. Chen even spoke out about his niece dying and not being able to come back to life to receive this compensation. Isn't it good that he's comfortable for the rest of his life? This enrages Tin, who rips up the check, spills it in Chen's face, and tells Chen to get out. He told those people that even if he couldn't fight them, he would fight to the end, thinking of Tin's defiant attempts at justice during the day. Chen thought of something from the past, something bad. He thinks Tin is a fool, a fool who will surely regret it in the future. Just as he did back then, coming out of the shower, Tin notices that his cell phone has been receiving records of collections. Not only was this thing strange, but there was a lot more filming going on in front of the house. They also say rumor mumbling things like Tin drinks. There's nothing, doesn't care about his niece. That's what got her hit by a car and killed, and even now opening an account to collect donations, and so on. Yes, this is all Chan's tactic. He used public opinion to create false rumors and put pressure on Tin's side. Even when Tin goes to Chan and theorizes, Chan is organized and even molests Tin. <laughs> because he's convinced Tin can't fight him. As Tin gasps and tries to make a move, he pulls the heavy weight out of his arms. Now Tin had to behave. He doesn't understand at all why Chen did what he did. <laughs> Chen is also very frank and says outright that he is all about money and power. He's experienced life without both, so that's all he has eyes for now. Tin was disappointed and upset. As a lawyer, Chen does not seek fairness and does not protect the weak. Instead, he became a tool of those people. But Chen laughs and says he's had this thought before. But in the end he knew that he was just a little lawyer. What could he change? So what he's doing now is helping the weak ah. He's helping the weak fight for more compensation. Tin doesn't agree with him. Even if the world is full of bad, we as individuals shouldn't be bad. Tin thinks that Chen's help isn't the right way at all. He wants Chen to tell the congressman that he doesn't want a dime. All he needs is for the congressman's son to come to his knees and apologize sincerely to his niece. Tin's request looked ridiculous to Chen because those guys would know the first thing about apologizing. You are asking for nothing more than money. This negotiation broke up unhappily. Tin's untamped look intrigued Chen, and the congressman's side refuses to let his son meet Chen. They also refused to talk about a single detail of what exactly happened, which struck Kun as odd. He approaches Kun Ho Ten to talk to him, and is also interrupted by the councilman. 
The congressman even flat out said he wasn't allowed to meet with Tan. This makes Chen suspect that there's more to this incident than just a car accident. The next day, Chen was fired by the congressman and outright forbidden to touch the case again. This heightened his suspicions of what the congressman was afraid of. Chen may seem like the kind of bad guy who serves the powerful, but he's not. Chen didn't choose to give up after realizing that things weren't simple. Instead, he flatly stated to the congressman's face that he would find out whatever he wanted to know. Chen is not the only one who has suffered retaliation from the congressman's son. Even Tin fell to the side of the road in a drunken fight with a passerby because his reputation had turned sour. It was Chen who came and took him back. With all his clothes off, is something going to happen between them? This is Chan's house. What kind of princess look is this at this point? Din. A 2-2. Since she was drunk and broken, Tin was worried if anything had happened between the two last night. Tin just threw up all over him, so Chen took all his clothes off. Chen says that if he does want something to happen, it will be in a situation where both parties are sensible. Then the two are quite sensible now. Chen goes to Tin actually to talk to him about the case. He realizes that the case is more than just a car accident. Now that he's been fired over there, he's hoping to be Tin's lawyer. At this point, Tin is not believing him at all. He had only just arrived at his doorstep when he realized that his home had been burglarized and turned upside down. It's a good thing. Grandma wasn't home at first and didn't get hurt. Watching the house fall into disarray, Tin's first thought is that it's a conspiracy by Chen. Strangely enough, nothing was missing from the house either. Chen installed cameras in the house and taught Grandma how to use the camera to view it on her cell phone. Tin came to be reluctant to accept his unknown kindness. He was still full of distrust of him. Still, Watching Chen try out the camera clarity made me laugh involuntarily. Chen tells Tin that all the cameras on the street were vandalized when the thieves patronized it. This is clearly not a coincidence. He found a car recorder in a nearby car. The man in the recorder is the one who taught Chen a lesson in the bathroom. He's on the congressman's side. The camera did the trick, and together they combined their efforts to catch the man. But during the exchange, Chen accidentally gets cut by a knife. Chen literally teases Tin all the time, even when he's rubbing it in. So, what exactly is the congressman looking for over there? Chen has a great royal friend, Sister Rose, who owns a bar. They have known each other for many years and are very close friends. Chen came this time to inquire about something. Two days ago the congressman's son, Tan, came into the bar and got drunk. He wondered if drunk he had reviewed anything. For him to inquire about this, he would have to mention Sister Maya, the resident singer in the bar. She and some of the girls were the ones who accompanied Tan that day. Sister Rose and Sister Maya are also clearly seeing some marvelousness between these two. For Tan, Sister Maya was impressed because Tan was drunk after two drinks and babbling. He did mention one thing while he was on a bender. Though, I wonder what the father's face would look like if he saw the doll. The doll turns out to be one of the key clues. No wonder there were people sent to Tin's house earlier to look for the doll. Tan goes to Tin's house and asks Grandma to help find out all of her niece's dolls. It's all ordinary toys, nothing special. Instead, there was a doll that kinda caught Chan's attention. This doll is a niece's favorite, much less a favorite to take out and play with, because this doll is from when the family was in bad shape. But the students have dolls that dear Uncle Tin sewed for her. Stitch by stitch, Tin is such a warm-hearted uncle. The dolls are nothing special, and Chen hopes to take them back to study them. Grandma agreed, and Grandma appreciated Chan's help. She seems to see that Chen is tough on the outside and soft on the inside. She wishes Chen would come and talk to her when he has time. In the evening, Tin comes home and asks Grandma if Chen was here. He wants Grandma to leave Chen alone. Chen, as a person, is just good looking on the outside, but bad on the inside. But Grandma hits the nail on the head when she says that maybe Chen isn't what you think he is. Maybe there's a reason he's the way he is. Grandma's intuition told her that Chen should be a very kind person, but something really horrible happened to him to make him like this. People, uh, tend to camouflage themselves with heavy armor only after they've been hurt. Tin looked puzzled. But Grandma's words seemed to hold truth. Look at Chen's happy face when he gets his first case. Just know that Chen was once a hot-blooded and righteous lawyer. He succeeds in helping a mother-in-law and feels his duty as a lawyer to help protect the weak. His mother has also been there for him, supporting and accompanying him. But not until he got a case, a case of evicting villagers because capital was eyeing the land. Chen brought his mother to the local area to provide legal assistance. However, it ended in a blood lesson. My youngest niece has a very good friend, Polly who is going away to school with her mom. Before she left, she wanted to visit her grandmother one more time and say goodbye. Grandma happens to be packing up her niece's belongings and asks Polly to choose one as a memento. Yes, Polly just happened to choose that all-important doll. In order to be able to inquire about the doll, Tang goes to Tin's school. He wants to get the kids to help through ice cream, but it turned out that after asking around only one little girl, 
had ever seen her niece carry around a doll. That's a puppy doll that makes a hello with wolf, but this doll was not among the dolls Chen brought back. Today was a complete waste of time. Because of the press conference, Tin dresses up properly, but Chen stops him. He needed Tin to be messy and a bit unkempt, preferably looking all a sweaty and smelly on him, because he wants to create the impression that Tin is the kind of guy who runs around for his knees. He needs this persona to generate public sympathy, because at the press conference, Chen said he had the evidence, drawing attention and alarm from the legislators. He volunteered to see Chen with his son Tin. Before they could talk for more than a few moments, Tin made a threatening remark about Chen. Chen bluntly states that people who only know how to terrorize others do so because they live their lives in constant fear. What exactly is Tan afraid of? Well, it's obviously his father he's afraid of. Tan is always so cranky and likes to solve problems violently. We just knew he must have learned it from somewhere. And you see the way his father treats him, slapping and choking him at every turn. You can see that Tan, though hateful, as a pitiful situation. This conversation did not end happily. Chen did not agree to the terms given by the MP and this gave up intervening in the case. Before leaving, Chen told the councilman and the guys that he found the doll. Upon returning, the councilman bluntly states that if the evidence is strong, he will arrange for Ten to turn himself in. He's still a kid. He'll do a couple years in jail. Tops, Ten looked at his father quite incredulously, and all he got was another slap in the face. Ten talks to the, his closest bodyguard, hoping he can't get him out of here. But the only replies that the councilman won't allow him to leave, and Ten becomes even more desperate. His closest brother, the, is just a dad's man and doesn't stand by his side. Then the congressman's side did a lot of backroom deals. For example, they got Ten expelled from a taekwondo school and intentionally poisoned the puppy grandma fed him. Even they set Ten's house on fire. Good thing no one was hurt. Chen also got the fire out in time. They find the ring with Ten's name engraved on it at the scene, which gives them leverage to switch to Chen. Chen used the picture of the ring to get the congressman to stop and not turn on Tin and Grandma. Otherwise, these photos will be posted somewhere. And then, the image of the MP will be lost. The congressman was so angry, he exploded. He thought his son had gotten him into trouble again in private. Not for the first time after all. The congressman felt that this useless son would only cause him trouble. Although Tin denies that he went to burn the house down, the councilman still comes down hard on him. Even the congressman put his head in the pool. It's really hard to imagine a father doing this. It's natural for Tin's side to celebrate after this incident, because surely there's no new action from the congressman. But Tin seems to notice something a little off about starting the fire. Through all the details, Tin realizes that the people who set the fire should not be Tan and the others. But Chen, who is reluctant to call the police, Chen was in front of Tin's house when the fire started. Chen was holding a large fire extinguisher ready to go. Tin's guess wasn't wrong. It was indeed Chen, who asked Sister Maya and the others to steal Tan's ring and then set fire to this self-induced drama. However, his intention is good, and it is to deter the members side from making any further moves. He can't protect Tin and Grandma, but Tin doesn't see it that way. He thinks Chen is just getting revenge because he was fired over there. He and his grandmother were nothing more than twos, and he disdained Chen's unscrupulous methods. Chen asks Tin rhetorically, you don't like my ways, so what can you do? If you can do anything, don't dream you can't protect those around you. The two men parted on bad terms because of their different philosophies. Maybe for now, Chen is right, their enemies are powerful, and without outsmarting them, they may always be in the same place. But Chen thinks too little about it. He didn't consider what if he hurt Grandma. Tin can't be entirely wrong. Insist that the desire for fairness and justice in the human heart should also be there. Chen comes to Sister Rose to express the dissatisfaction in his heart. He's clearly doing the right thing, yet Tin holds a grudge. Rose pointed out the problem. Chen's been alone too long to think about anything but himself. But Tin's different. Rose wants Chen to think about the time he spent with his mom. Wouldn't he be able to understand Tin then? Unable to be relieved by Chen's words, Tin couldn't think of anything else. He decides to go straight to Tin and ask what the truth of the matter really is. But he's no match for Thee. Not to mention the other guy's got a gun. But Thee isn't saying nothing. He could also understand Tin's search for the truth for his niece. So he tells Tin that all is not what Tin sees. Upon returning, Tain realizes that Chen is also at his house and a large family is waiting for him to return. He looked at himself covered in wounds and put his life on the line without asking for the truth. Coupled with Chen's questioning, in a feat of anger, Tin yells at Chen again. He says he just wants to win. What with all the people he doesn't care about, and frankly has no heart. Chen also admitted in front of the crowd that he set up the arson. The scene was awkward. Chen also left Tin's house. It was grandma's turn to be very upset. She tells Tin that Chen actually came today to apologize and he still feels like it pissed you off. Grandma thinks that while what Chen did in this case was wrong, he was doing it for our own good. 
but what Tin said today was really too much. She tells Tin to do some soul searching. Was Chen hard hearted or was Tin just overly angry? The congressman's side of the family suddenly learns that the arson was engineered by Chen. Suddenly, they were on a series of counterattacks. They falsely accused the Tins of collecting high insurance money and living fast off their niece's accident. Chen loses again at this stage. At this point, the fool you have a crush on is coming to you wanting to apologize. Chen is troubled by the situation of the moment when Tin arrives at Chen's place with Song made by his grandmother. He's here to apologize. He shouldn't have been prejudiced against Chen and made Chen the bad guy. He knew he was completely wrong. Sincere attitude and gentle tone. The two were finally reconciled. Chen will also continue to act as Tin's attorney and advise him. Tin also heated up Chen's sauna made by his grandmother and even fanned him to keep him cool. Chen, who had been on her own for a long time, was instantly moved by such a warm gesture from Tin. Tin also said outright that the congressman's side seems to have quite a bit of information now. He tells Chen to be careful about whatever he does next. The niece's insurance payout was only 200,000 baht, not as much as the 1 million baht the internet said. Chen had already thought of ways to deal with those rumors, reassuring her grandmother not to worry, but he told grandma not to tell the public for a while. And the congressman sighed. The congressman intends to completely muzzle Tan, whether it's an interview or whoever. Tan don't answer, shut up and don't create problems. The congressman is even planning to send Tan out of the country. What is the congressman's solution? Their usual scapegoat. Of course, the council and got the family gardener to take the blame. Chen is wondering why he didn't look for someone to take the blame in the first place if he wanted to, had to wait until after his son was recognized by the public as a murderer to find someone to take the blame. It's really doubtful, but Tin makes a startling point. Could it be that Tan really wasn't responsible for the crash? That day when he went to Tan to ask for the truth, they, the bodyguard, tells him things aren't what he sees, so at least the, the bodyguard, is supposed to know the whole story? Tan flashed his evil belly smile again, and on the other side, little poor Tan is crying. He's so sad. This gardener uncle, he used to play with the uncle when he was a kid, now uncle is going to jail for him, but he was still talking tough and paralyzing himself. Uncle went to do this, and father must have given him a lot of favors. Uncle's wife and children will surely be able to improve their conditions now. It occurred to him that maybe he had done something good. To get to the bottom of things, Chen and Tin decide to start with Tan and his bodyguard brother. They, the plan was for them to blend in with the crowd when Tan and his friend bear packed Sister Rose's bar. Tan, true to form, was a child, drunk into drinks and throwing up in the bathroom. Tin, on the other hand, is responsible for approaching the bodyguard and Tan. But then he looked at Tan and saw that he was falling asleep. They, the bodyguard's brother, doesn't say so explicitly, but implies that the perpetrator is someone else. On the other hand, Chan is in charge of approaching Bear. Tan's best friend, it's as simple as making a passive-aggressive gesture. He needed to make the other guy feel like he had some interest in him and wanted to take it further so he could slowly lure him in. The night he found out from Bear that something had gone wrong, Bear and Tan were also drunk in this bar, which means Tan won't be the real killer, because he fell asleep after two drinks. How is it possible to drive in such a state? Intelligence is inquiring, so, how should I respond to the next invitation to the room? Bear also said he doesn't mind three guys together. You dudes really play big. <laughs> the two are exchanging getting information, huh? and Tan gets jealous. He thought to himself, no wonder he sidetracked me to get a bodyguard, right? It turns out that you kids want to reach out to his friends, don't you? Chan immediately denied it. He said seeing Bear as a program was improvised. Improvised. <laughs> Having made so much progress, it's time to enjoy Sister Maya's song. After this night, it just became really obvious that Tin and Watch Chan both like each other. The two should just be able to feel them flirt, their eyes pulling. They thrilled us and were quite a pleasure to watch. As mentioned before, there are rumors out there that Tin's family received a million baht in compensation. This thing isn't a rumor anymore. Chen finds out that the pay is none other than their good neighbor, Sister Nam. Sister Nam's family was in foreign debt, which is why she sold some information to reporters and others. But Sister Nam firmly said that she only told some truth and didn't mess up other important things. Sister Nam denied that she told the MP's side about Chen designing the heavy fire. And how did the congressman's side learn about it? Tin deliberately dresses slowly and deliberately just doesn't wear a top to talk to Chen. I didn't realize you were so good at it. Two people are here and it doesn't matter what the conversation is about anymore. Atmospheric ambiguity is the best thing about it. But just like in a deep gentleman's house, they were disturbed whenever they approached. The mom, dad, and brother all disturbed one another in the last one. And there's a grandma to be added in this one. In a panic, Chen's clothes are on backwards. And the whole thing is still very distracted. 
At this point, I think the two should kind of start talking even if it's not explicitly stated. At least both sides have a good feeling about it, and it's a clear-cut card that both sides know about. Chen did spot a scene on the surveillance of Sister Rose's bar. That is, Chen did come to the bar that night with the, the bouncer. Unfortunately, it wasn't able to see the car that Tin came in. The tone of the call between him and Tin was much different at this point. Full of sappiness, despite all his denials calling Sister Rose an older woman, it still didn't escape Sister Rose's notice. She realized that the two were just dating, or at least close to it. Then he got a call from Tin who had already arrived. This time, his tone became deliberately serious again. In order to get further clues, Chen brings all of his niece's belongings to the law firm to view. He found a group photo in his niece's pencil case. In the group photo, the niece does have a dog doll on her. He immediately went back to Tin's house and called Tin and his grandmother to join him in the search. Grandma recognized the dog doll when she saw the photo. It was taken by Polly, the niece's best friend, but Polly went out of town and didn't even know the address. Grandma decided to go to the market and make some good inquiries. On the other hand, the congressman went so far as to murder the scapegoat gardener to keep his mouth shut. Tin almost threw up when he found out. He went to his father and argued with him, but he simply couldn't compete. He gets nothing but accusations and is called trash. Chen's sleeping position is simply awful. Beyond belief, this led to Tin being afraid to even sleep with him, feeling unable to find a place to put his feet. The next day, Chen still wore a resentful expression. He thinks it's as if Tin is purposely not sleeping with him, as if he's afraid of losing his virginity and Tin silently endured the bitterness of his heart. He besides uncovered the betrayal of Brother Vite, who had put out a message to the congressman. Chen also learns some new information from her grandmother and finds Polly's new digs. This place is exactly where Chen used to help the villagers, but now he seems to be undaunted and braving the past. There, in addition to some painful memories, was a former old flame. Chen had told Sister Rose that the night was the best night of his life. These words fell on the deaf ears of Tin, who happened to overhear them. The two decide to call the police and set out to find out what happened to Polly. After a bit of a chase, I eventually found Polly's mom's door at the market. However, the store was closed for something and one had to be patient. On the way back, Chen sees a silk scarf that brings back some memories of the past, especially about his mother. Tin senses that there may be some less than pleasant memories here for Chen. So, he sought out the roadside cellar, as if it were an episode of an idle show. The hero is playing a guitar and singing a love song on the side of the road confessing his love for his beloved. The next day, they come to the market again, just in time to run into Polly and the others returning. The two managed to get their hands on the doll, a puppy doll that was not only cute, but could also record. However, now it's broken and needs to be fixed. On the way back, they encountered a homeless man who was robbing them, and this man turned out to be a familiar figure to Chen, a former village chief, back in the day, as Capital wanted to buy out the land here for tourist attractions. However, the villagers were reluctant and the compensation issue has not been resolved. Chen used to fight hard for the good of the entire village. Originally, we were all of one mind and outward looking, but the village chief betrayed us all. Not only does this make all of Chen's efforts go to waste, it even kills Chen's mom. In the end, Chen gets to know Nguyen, the old flame that Sister Rose talks about. He made a comeback and resorted to violence to avenge his mother's death. That's when he started, and that's when Chen became all about power and money. After learning about Chen's complete past, Tin is very heartbroken for Chen. He knew Chen wasn't what he appeared to be. He hopes to awaken Chen's inner truth and rescue him from the dark abyss. That night, they were also open to each other's bodies. Afterward, Tin cared to mention that most wonderful night to Sister Rose. So he asks Chen to rate him. Not only does his score, he has to count whether it compares to the best night ever. However, Chen, who experienced this wonderful night, he didn't look like he was planning on facing it together with Tin. He wants to leave Tin behind and take the doll to negotiate with the congressman. On the way, Doll's voice suddenly got better. Although incomplete, it is possible to understand the events. The niece accidentally overheard the conversation between the congressman and the reporter. She even witnessed the congressman kill the reporter in its entirety. So the other guy ran over his niece with his car to silence her. Since the congressman was driving his son's car, that's why his son was approached to offset the charges. But Chan is intercepted by Brother Vite on the way. Brother Vite has no other agenda. He's just pissed that he was found out by Chen and abandoned by the congressman and wants revenge. Chen was wounded and almost died. Chen was saved by a child, and this child is one of the villagers who accompanied Chen back then. Not all of the villagers had mutiny like the village chief back then. There are still a lot of villagers on Chen's side. Chen's cause of helping them back then created his own saved past. He remembered again what his mother had told him back then. A hundred causes must have consequences. For help, Chen had to bring Tin to a man, the muscle-gray slugger who makes Tin angry and Chen snicker. 
No Wind is the one who helped Chan to succeed in his revenge, and he is also an ex-boyfriend. How obsessed is No Wind with Chan? He even got Chan's name tattooed on his body after Chan left. However, due to his poor tie, it tattooed the wrong word. Tin is naturally upset by No Wind's presence, and has even begun to get angry. Not only is she angry, Tin seems to be insecure. After all, No Wind seems to be able to protect Chan better. He seemed to have nothing but his fingers and fists. What should we do? Coaxing, naturally. Chen has to tell Tin that he's one of the most important thing. In addition to complimenting him on his cuteness, he stopped by to reassure Tin that he cared about that most wonderful night. The next day, Chen tells Noen about his relationship with Tin, giving Tin a piece of his mind. Maybe he didn't want to take a chance with Tin because he genuinely liked him. Tin is planning something big. Chen and Tin are all kinds of sweet and cuddly. After Tin falls asleep, Chen makes plans to leave on his own. He's going to set up a meeting with the congressman. While the congressman sighed, is lecturing his son Tan and bodyguard Brother Thee. What happened? Because Brother Thee, the bodyguard, has a heart for Tan. He took advantage of the congressman's absence, and he fled the house with Tan. Out there, the duo had a normal and happy vacation life. The two are rapidly heating up their relationship here. But because Tan sends out a friend post and forgets to block his dad, he gets caught by his dad. He separates Tan from Brother Thee and sends Tan out of the country. And it's here that the congressman reveals the reason he's never liked his own son. Turns out his mother died after he was born, so the congressman hated the son so much that he thought he had taken away his favorite person. So whatever he does to please this father, what he gets is always indifference. They scold him. No one even gave Chen a gift before Chen left. That is, catching Brother Vite who almost got him killed. At this point Chen is no longer angry. He sensed from Tin that it was because of the importance of the apology and the right he had expressed to Brother Vite over the long years. That's what got Brother Vite lost. He only hoped that Brother Vite would be good afterward, and that he would make a fresh start, and establish a correct outlook on the three things, and this Brother Vite thing delayed the departure. That's when Tin arrived. At this point, Chen is no longer able to do anything to hide it from Tin. He is no longer able to lie with Panache about not loving Tin, when faced with the person he loves most. He's just using Tin, the Tin in front of himself in his heart. He puts the most important ring. His mother left him on Tin, then pushes him away viciously. He got on the plane alone. Tin and Owen win their way out of here with a boxing duel. He's setting out to find the love of his life. Chen, the footage of Chen's side, communicating with the legislators was arranged for Sister Rose and the others to go out live. So the congressman foolishly stayed on the air and admitted to all his crimes. But the congressman realizes he's been counted out and immediately tries to get revenge on Chen. That's when Tin also arrives in time to protect his lover. It's just a shame that the fists can't be a tool. Chen was shot so many times by the congressman that it clung to Tin and shielded him. The congressman is really laying down the law. Luckily it was Sister Rose who arrived in time to scare the congressman away. And the good thing about Chen is that he's prepared. He's wearing body armor. The story ends with the congressman being taken to jail because of the evidence. And due to some of his evil deeds inside the prison, he was also killed. His son Tan didn't succeed in flying abroad because he made a fuss about the plane. He's with thee, the bodyguard, naturally. And our main characters, Chen and Tin, are concerned and sweet next to the hospital bed. Chen wants water one minute, then she doesn't want water and wants an apple. A little while later, the apples are going to be bunny-shaped. Tin, of course, can only be coaxed. Later, Tin also successfully proposed, and the two entered into marriage. Sister Rose and Sister Maya are also together, so it's a happy occasion for all. All right, it's over. Sprinkle the flowers. The two partners are together again, and the audience is really happy. Hopefully, they'll have more to work with. Well, thank you for your attention, likes and comments, and we'll see you in the next issue.